Hello, felting friends. We are going to jump right in and do some eyes. Here I'm putting on Sarah's little wart. That was so fun. And putting some coloring for depth up her nose. It's just like a little brown color. I don't recommend black. Uh, brown's just a little bit less harsh. So you can go ahead and add that in. I did put some coloring on the lips. Not quite sure if I like it just yet. Um, so here for the whites of the eyes, you're going to make two little pillows. Sorry, my head is in the way. Um, but two little pillows, kind of keep them a little bit fluffy and go ahead and put those on. Pick your color of your irises and then go ahead and just tack those on. The video does move a little bit quick, but here I am just adding in just the colors of the iris. So you can put whatever you'd like and uh, then some little pupils. And what you wanna do is outline the eye in the uh, brown or black for the eye and around the iris. So there you go, she looks really scary um, <laughs> with no eyelids, but we have the white for the white of the eye, little pillow, then the iris, the pupil, and then you just trim around the eyeball, uh, the iris and the eyeball in the black, and it just adds dimension. She looks really kind of crazy at this point, so don't get discouraged. Um, it will come together when you do the eyelids. So I ended up not really caring for the look of the needle felted eye, but I decided to post the video anyways so that you could see it um, and then decide for yourselves. I may take these out and go back to my um, eye that I do with the fabric and the painting, which I show in the eye making video for Winifred. So you can check that uh, video out if you would like to see that technique. So I know that first bit did jump a little quickly, uh, but really you're just putting on the coloring. There's nothing too difficult about it. Um, so I did go ahead and slow it down here for the second eye. So you can see I am going around the iris with the black color. You can use the same color that you used uh, for the shading of the nostrils. And then you're just going around the eye itself. Uh, at that point, you can decide the shape of the eye, but again, you're going to be putting on eyelids, so a lot of that is going to get covered. So don't stress too much. She looks really bug-eyed and really crazy at this point. Um, and like I said, I may end up taking off the lip color. Um, I did the lip color with wool on this particular doll instead of the chalk and it just it's a little harsh so I may end up pulling that off and going back to the chalk. Um, I just wanted to show you a different technique and what it would look like so it's just a little bit um, more more of a strong color so I hope you guys had a nice holiday. Um, I haven't seen you in a little while it's been really a lot of traveling and there she is. <laughs> so I've been working on a sweater that I can take with me and that's what I've been doing, uh, crocheting a sweater and I have kind of neglected my dolls. So I'm back, I'm back. I'm, I think I'm going to take out the eyes and do them, like I said, in the other, other uh, technique. So for the eyelids, you're going to go back to the skin color uh, whichever skin color you used. I did use a pale peach and uh, some of the sand. So I'm just going back. Um, you want to get your two pillows, uh, just two little puffs of your fluff there, your wool. Just like when we make the lips, we are going going to make uh, an edge. So just by folding it down, you're making a little bit of an edge and then you can leave the other side fluffy. So it's just like when you did the lips, you just have to figure out um, you know, how much to pull. So you can see that's a pretty small amount. And you're just making your edge by folding it over. 
and needle felting it and then just leave your your other side fluffy and it's pretty flat there's not a lot of air in it so that's all you'd have to do and one of the techniques that I learned um, along the way I think Marie shows in her living felt video um, when you go to put the eyelids on in the corner you want to put it on backwards So I'll show you that here in just a minute when we go to put them on, when I, when I go to put them on. I always say we like you're here with me. <laughs> really, it's just me. So here, here we go. Um, so you're going to put it on upside down. There we go. Upside down. I almost forgot to do it myself. Put it on upside down, tack down the corner, and then fold it so that you get a little bit of a um, of a fold on the inside. So did you see how I did that? I put it upside down in the corner, tack it down, and then fold it back. And you'll get that little like pocket. And then just don't, don't smash it down because you want to leave um, a little bit of airiness to it so that, you know, it's not just smashed on the face. So just really gently uh, with your fine needle there. And then, you know, it's still movable. So at this point, you can uh, decide, you know, the shape of the eye. You can get different facial expressions. If you have too much, just pull it off. So I hope the speed of this portion is better now. I know the beginning of the video went a little quickly, but really you're just choosing your colors, uh, whatever colors you want and putting them on. So here I'm just uh, with my fine needle there. Actually, that might be the medium. Medium or fine. Just put them, put that lower lash on or lower lid on just how you want the shape. And just give yourself, it doesn't have to be perfect because you have the top, layer, the top lid uh, to still go as well. And then you can kind of figure out, you know, how you want to blend it into the cheek area. So see how I'm defining um, like, the, like the little puffiness under your eyes. See, that looks better. She's not so wide-eyed. So again, I just didn't feel like the eyes were... Uh, popping as much as I wanted with the needle felted eye. Um, I've, I, maybe I just need more practice. I don't know. But so I think I'm going to end up removing these. But I wanted to show you uh, the video just because the eyelids did work out well. And um, so that you, if you wanted to do the needle felted eyes, you could see how to do that. So, and if you want to do the fabric eyes with the painted iris, uh, then you can just refer to my faces video with Winifred's face, and I do show how to do that. So there she is with the lower lids on. She is going to get teeth, so her smile is not going to be as clown clown-like <laughs> as it is right now. So maybe that'll help tone down those lips. So we have the lower lid going into the cheek and I was happy with that, that came out. And then you can use your doll needle to kind of blend in if things got mashed down too much. Um, if, you're, if you have seams when you put the lid on the um, if you have a seam there, you can use the reverse needle to kind of bring some of that back out. Um, just put that in. The reverse needle takes out uh, wool, fluffs it back up, and then you can put it back down, uh, needle felt it back down the way that you want to. So just kind of refining a few things there. So 
So I hope you guys had a nice holiday season. Oh, it was it was busy. I'm glad I, it's fun and exciting, and Christmas is so such a nice time. But I I am glad <laughs> glad for it to be over. So here we go. So here we are making the second, uh, the upper eyelids and pretty much done the same way. Just fold the wool over so that you can get a nice edge. So all my dolls have been going pretty slowly. I don't know, we moved everything down to the basement and it's been so cold. Oh, it's so cold in the house that, um, I don't know if I feel like going down and working in the basement. While well, that and we had all the Christmas supply boxes and everything was kind of pulled out, you know, pulled out of the storage space. So things have been kind of all over the place. I haven't really had time or felt much like going down there. So knitting a sweater on the nice warm sofa seems like a nicer option. So that's what I've been doing instead. But I did have time before we did some traveling to make this video, and so I thought I would get the editing done and get it out for you. So that you can see what's happening here. So again, just um, getting everything tacked down on that upper lid. I think once I get the eyes, these eyes out and put in the ones that I that I like better. I suppose that she should have the same eyes as Winifred so they look, you know, like that since there's going to be a set. I should try to do the same techniques with all three. I suppose I get, you know, it's like you get in your head an idea and you think, oh, I want to try something this way and Doing that mid-project is probably not the best, but that's okay. So again, just fold over the second one. Hopefully this is not going too slowly. I just really wanted you to see how I'm doing it. Since the start of the video went so super fast, I didn't really get a chance to even have a proper introduction into what we were doing. We kind of just jumped full steam in there. Just pull off some of the excess there. So what you can do is just get your eyes prepared and then when you're putting, I think the eyelids are kind of the harder part anyways. Um, the eyes, you know, putting in the white and putting on the color, that's not too difficult. Um, the eyelids are really the, the tricky bit. So, and what you can do when you're doing the upper eyelids, really pay attention to how far back um, the top of it goes. Um, you know, really look at a picture and the eyelid itself really is the part that recedes, um, you know, when your eye is open and then part of it goes into the eyebrow bone. So if you can look at a picture or look in the mirror when you're putting those on and sculpting those, I think that you'll really help yourself out, um, to, to see, you know, the curvature of how that goes on. That's, a, I think that's the part that I probably struggle with the most. And then you won't lose your forehead so much either, you know. I always try to, try to make that forehead bigger. So again, put that on upside down. And then tack the corner. 
can see I'm going really slow at this part so you can really see what I'm doing. And just tack that corner in. And then fold it over. You're going to almost just cover the whole eye when you're putting it on. Must be some hay or something there I'm trying to. And then get the shape of it. You know, hold the shape with your fingers. And then put in, and what you want to do is kind of um, feather it up a little so that she looks, you know, happy at the corners. You know, the, the corners of your eye back by your ear kind of go up. And then this is where I was talking about uh, putting in that that deep crease. So you're really going to put in that deep crease right there. And you can use, um, you can get in, get your strong needle at this point if you need to, to really put that in there, that crease in there. Because most of your eyelid is, when, it, when it's open, it's like tucked back in this, in this line. And you don't want to smash it down because then it just, you know, you lose all of your, all of your character. And it goes up into the eyebrow area. So I think one of the mistakes that I made when I first started was making the eyes too large on my characters. Um, you know, you really don't see very much of the eye hardly at all. So really stop and look at a picture um, or in the mirror when you're doing this part and decide on decide on the look. So, you know, if you look in the mirror and you smile, your eye's going to do one thing. If you look in the mirror and then you frown, it's going to do another. So you need to decide, you know, is your doll happy right now? Is she sad? Um, you, you can't, you, when you look at a picture, you, you have to st stick with one expression. So there I'm, I have my firm needle and I'm putting in that really deep, crease there. And even if you decide to use glass eyes, this video is still going to be helpful because the eyeball itself part of the video, um, you know, we was pretty quick. So it's more, I guess, I guess I should call it more of an eyelid video. Um, so you can see that I, I've left it uh, puffy. And on Sarah's pictures, the uh, eyelid on the corners where I'm at right now, it there is not much of a crease. So it kind of blends into um, where the eyebrow is going to go. So the deep set part is right there. And then like if you ever look at like a picture of a basset hound dog or something, you know, and they've got those sad eyes. Um, if you look, they kind of have a little bit of a, an A to the eye, to the top eyebrow. So it's, you know, it goes kind of up towards, like if you think of the letter A, and that'll kind of make it, you know, make it look happy or kind of droopy. So many expressions with the eyelid. So you want to leave some of the airiness in it. You don't want to smash it all down. Yeah, I like how the eyelid, I like how that part came out. I just need to replace those eyes. They didn't have the shine 
um, you can put in, I do put in white, the little white spark of life. Um, and that does help, but to me it wasn't as, wasn't the same, wasn't as shiny. So I guess I like the clay eyes or the glass eyes or the fabric painted eyes. So here we are on the other side. You can see she's not looking quite so scary and crazy. She looked crazy. So I just fold that right over. I hope the new year brings good things for everybody. Maybe you have some New Year's resolutions going on. So again, just go ahead and cover the eye when you are putting it on and then you can kind of move things around um, afterwards. And Sarah has those really strong eyebrow lines um, going from her nose you know that I don't know she almost, she almost looked like Oscar the Grouch in the movie like she had really strong <laughs> eyebrows so I was trying to um trying to get that right there get that look and if the seam is bad you know when you put your eyelids on you can just feather it out with the doll needle or um, you can get the reverse needle and try to feather some of that out. If it's, you know, looking like too hard of a seam for you. So just take your time and, um, you know, have fun with the sculpting and uh, let it be what it wants to be. So I'm going to probably replace those eyes um, I'm probably going to do that off camera and then when I see you next, I think we may be working on some hands. Uh, oh, actually, let's, let's maybe do some hair so that they look pretty and then we will start on some arms. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these ladies, these, uh, the two Sarah dolls and the Winifred. I won't do the other face off camera. I'll, I'll keep that for the video. Um, but I think we'll start some hair and get some arms going and then we'll do our last face okay so if you have any comments uh if there's anything that i'm not showing you that you'd like to see um do let me know not sure if i'm going to keep those lips or not um as far as the coloring so we'll just have to see on the next video what she looks like so but again if there's anything that you want to see or have explained just leave me a comment um and I will try to record that for you, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe my videos and stay tuned. More things are coming. Hopefully this new year we will uh, get out some videos that are more frequent. That's always the problem. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. And I hope you guys had a nice start to your new year. I have a kit I need to work on, too. I got an elf kit from Living Fowl that I have not had time to do. So I'm going to allow myself some time to play. Because we all need that, don't we? I got back into knitting. I'm doing a crochet sweater and a knit sweater. So I needed a bit of a, a challenge. I haven't done knitting in quite a while and it's a bit tricky. So I like to learn a new, not a new skill, but practice a, a not well known skill. So there she is. I wasn't super happy with her eyes. So I think that's probably why I took a little break too. You know, when something doesn't come out the way that you really want it to you kind of you kind of set it down and you're like oh I don't I don't know how if I like her or not the eyes just weren't speaking to me but I hope you learned something from the the video and I think the eyelid process um was well done 
Um, just gotta, just gotta get a little more life in those eyes. So here I'm going to put in the whites of the eyes and I thought, oh, maybe that would, you know, sparkle them up a little bit. I can't tell if it's the mouth that I don't like. It's just so dark. We'll see. But here is the white of the eyes and that, that does help. Um, I did spread it out a little bit, maybe too much. I kind of lost the brightness. So if I were to do it again, I think I would just leave it in one spot. Um, I think I maybe cut it too small, like here. So I cut it a bit small. Um, so I would leave it a little bit larger. Um, you can see it kind of fades in just a bit too much, and then you can't see it. So it almost makes the eye dull. Um, so if, like the one on the left side is much brighter and um, more life to her. Now, again, she needs hair and eyebrows and eyelashes, and so all those things add. There was an artist, uh, the Wimpleberry artist, does her dolls with the wool, and they have such a pretty, delicate, um, almost like a watercolor look to them, um, and so that was kind of what I was trying to achieve. And I think I did a little bit. Um, maybe the lips take away from it because they're so dark. Um, but it's just not my style. So I'm going to go back to my style. And um, I think that, you know, you see someone else's artwork and you think, oh, maybe I'll try to do it more like that. But it's just not, it's just not yours. So I suppose it's good to stick to what you... Uh, what you are good at. So find your style what, with what you like and um, that would be the best. So there she is. <laughs> she looks so silly. Very, very creepy stage, right? <laughs> so hopefully she will be beautiful when you see her next. So thank you so much. All right, friends. Bye-bye.